could not have picked a better team to be a part of and a better lobby to jump on the mic for for my first ever day. So let's do it. Map number one. We were talking about Scars. Thank you, Fallout, for that nice little segue. They had had some midweek success, and I was watching a lot of the mid tournaments they were kind of playing in. And honestly, shout out to Shiv for putting together something so amazing. Scars was looking so incredibly well during that moment. Their team cohesion, the comms, they were flowing. And honestly, they really do need to find some success and it needs to start now rather than later. We don't want to get too far down the split and they end up getting relegated. There are only nine spots, Vicky. Yeah, actually, it's insane. Nine spots in such a lobby like this, and they had a pretty rough day for that second day where they were first able to perform. I believe they got 17th overall, and they were consistently finding themselves dropping out of these lobbies at 15th, 14th place with little to no kills. I think they only secured themselves like two points, so we need to see them pop off. Scars, all being on the other side of that overall leaderboard is very impressive. While we get to see maybe some 50-50s go down here in, this, in these POIs. Hey, that's what we want to see, a little bit of early game action. But just right now, everyone's kind of nestling into their POIs for the drop spot. And one set that I want to mention, Gaskin, talking about how the end game rings pull in correlation to mm -hmm. those drop spots. And as you can see right now, Element 6 over in North Pad with that ring kind of hovering over Scars and Checkpoint. A lot of these teams might find those shorter rotations to provide really fruitful benefits for them, and they can make it through the long game. But what better way to start off match number one with Vexed Gaming Matafe on your screen right now? And I really want to see what these can do. You know, Tyler FPS Unlucky, they're not happy getting third on that first match day. They want to come out on top. Mm, we thought that some teams were nestled up in their own POIs, but here we have Echo Esports fighting off against Game Ward. This is one of the 50-50s that I was trying to take my eyes on to see if any of these teams wanted to falter, maybe change their decision, but Echo Esports do have a nice positional advantage. Nice beamage with the Hemlock. We don't get to see these knocks as often with the Hemi early game, especially with no attachments, and we see it already. The advantage going in favor for Echo Esports while they try to send it in. I mean, it's always nice to be able to land on some purple Evo Shield here, too, aside from having the positional advantage. Only one member left for game board as they run away look you just gotta know when to disengage at this point so i understand that last member of game Ward trying to get out of dodge and essentially salvage anything that they can because that's the risk that you run if you're gonna take any of these early game contests and echo clearly having the upper hand and setting up bardo very nicely the only one with that white shield is as nice as we would call it a napkin the little blue blue <laughs> napkin i just love the way he goes about that but definitely claiming the downed beast for themselves and we saw this kind of happen in the first match day some of these teams would take that early contest in match number one if it doesn't prove to be going their way they'll kind of disengage and pick a different drop spot later on but so far so good for echo esports as they pick up some early kp yeah i guess ironing things out at the very very beginning is really important for a lot of these teams to also make a statement to secure their pois and their rotations because like you made mentioned uh you know seeing how a lot of these circles ended for some of the teams that ended up winning here on storm point it did favor the teams that the circles were naturally pulling towards like we saw in game number one in day one, Northpad going in favor for E6, who still land there, who are in the middle of the rotation. Scars are looking to bunker down, though, and they are still running the Newcastle and Watson comp. So, you know, now trying to take a very passive approach. They're trying to predict that the circle is going to be pulling towards down Beast. The beacon, I know that there is one at checkpoint, so teams like Foot e Foot Esports and uh, Start of Fight are going to be able to start rotating in that direction to see where that circle is going to be pulling. Yeah, and that's kind of what you need to do. Start a fight on your screen right now. Bambino getting a nice little reset in as they make their way towards that next zone. But hey, I love any time I jump on and someone's carrying a longbow. And this is going to be a little toxic, <laughs> Big P, and this is going to be a hot opinion here. The charge rifle. I am always going to pick one up in ranked, even if it's just because I want to be an absolute menace. But keeping it a little classy here is that longbow. Preach though, preach. And you know what's nice to know? The replicator does change, I believe, in five minutes, but currently the bundle is gonna be that purple three times scope and the purple normal uh stock. So that standard stock also is gonna be something that a lot of these players could be able to craft if they get their hands on a replicator. But a lot of teams like IG International have already made their way to the edge of this next circle. You can see that they have the information from the beacon. Horizon posted up on the outskirts of that next circle who also have that information. So this is gonna be a really important spot for the Teams are going to be rotating from the northern part of the map. Remember, I did have an E6, and they usually drop in north pad, so I'm wondering if they were booted out of this side or if they just wanted to get ahead of the curve and start rotating towards down beast. 
Ooh, and sometimes that's what you gotta do. IG International with the caustic and the crypto in the hands of noises. And I know you were kind of talking about crypto a little earlier. We were chatting about our backgrounds. I actually still love caustic being brought into Stormpoint as a great Ugh. way to control the space. But crypto also to provide a lot of that information that you need to have about the nearby teams. Because if you're looking for a safe rotation out, crypto provides that. Or, you know, you can use Seer, scan meta, throw up some exhibits and get all the information you can handle. Give it to me all here. All the exhibits, all the information. We've been seeing Seer in a lot of these compositions. I mean, he's been the mainstay piece for a lot of these teams because that information is too good. As you can see, the longbow, it may not be the charge rifle that you so love, Tiff, but you see them getting these picks. It's E6 on the other side, getting that knock onto Echo Esports. And with still one member alive, they're actually going to be able to reset. Nobody's going to fully set it onto Echo Esports on the high ground here in Down Beats. It's kind of spicy. If you're going to be able to get a few knocks right there, you need to go ahead and capitalize on that movement unless you've got a really secure positioning where you don't want to leave that advantage but to allow echo esports to just get a free reset is kind of spicy but granted we are just getting started the first ring kind of closing and 20 squads remaining and echo esports still leading the charge with the kp they've been able to pick off of game ward earlier and just running the top of down beast they have all the information and the high ground advantage, which is one thing I love about Stormpoint, Vicky. We talk about this all the time. It's that top-down verticality. You need to make mm -hmm. sure that you always have the high ground on your opponent, such as LFO Forever, kind of down here, Horizon, Lackey, and Light on your screen, bunkered up with those Watson fences. Yeah, I can talk about the disparity of the high to low ground forever when it comes to Stormpoint. That's why the Skyward Dive is so good to utilize, especially from those northern POI teams. As we take a look at some of our slower rotating squads, Totem Esports now remaking the rotation uphill. They're still rocking the, the napkin Evo shields, as if <laughs> made mention of before. It's still with one blue Evo, but they're looking to try to get involved in a fight. If they could get in some poke pressure, that'd be fantastic for them, especially if they're holding on to a sniper with one of their weapon classes. Looking at some of the other squads, though, making the rotation, Looks like we have some contention on the southern part of that next map. And here comes another squad. You see that Seer tactical out, and you see how quick Totem Esports is to turn around real quick to actually reposition. Well, then, let's talk about it. Vex Gaming, you know, Tyler FPS, current kill leader in the EMEA region. 21 eliminations on that day one from five matches. And let's see what Ooh. they can do. That IGL Matafe firing out with the Iron Sight Wingman. But meanwhile, Tyler is actually going to fall to Neyes. That's not what you want. Unlucky, and Matafe forced to go ahead and try to get the regain on Tyler. Smart to go for the res as soon as they can. And Corpa right now trying to reset as well. But this is a good moment, Vicky, where they can both get some reses off and just reset before going in on each other. Yeah, this is super important for Corpa too, because although they did have the high ground right there, that reset where they had to actually exchange, whether, you know, you had Neos go pop up the shield bat, you have the other player trying to get the res. Now Vex Gaming are going to be able to push up and they have the health advantage. So with that information, they're going to get extremely aggressive, but they're still playing on the outskirts of the circle. With a lot of this commotion, you could expect some other squads to get involved with a potential third party as an easy way to gatekeep in that next circle. And I think that's something you definitely have to keep an eye on. When you're going to play that aggressive edge and just push your way in, you are going to have to take every engagement and fight your way into that zone. Whereas if you're playing zone, you're already chilling. But hey, Fire Beavers, that dark horse we were talking about earlier on with Fallout seemed to have just claimed victory over Nightmare Esports. Limex, that mm. Polish team. If you guys are familiar with Nightmare Esports, they're familiar with that. They started off in NA and made their journey over, picking up an EMEA roster and sad to see them go out now, but Vex Gaming have found their prey, Vicky. Oh, we've been seeing a lot of these players drop with 54 players in the lobby. We got a lot of unfinished squads, but Vex Gaming in such a good position. Love the thermite grenades to block out any sort of exit here from Corpa, and that's it. Corpa Gaming trying to back up originally against Vex, and unfortunately, they were not able to get away. Here comes that potential third party. You saw the Wraith, and we know who it is. It's got to be Aurora, and they have the portal real quick to reposition inside the bunker doors, as well as the Beast of the Hunt that's activated. Oh, this is exactly what we wanted. One of those teams to watch, Aurora, and I, as a former Wraith main, am so excited for Ranches right now to get out in there. But it's going to go down, unfortunately. So Cleavy and Maliwan are going to have to pick up the slack here. Now, Arcstar is out to go ahead and zone it. Will they be able to stick this res, or are they going to be able to have to clean it up? But Vex on the other side, prepped and ready for the third party. Unlucky doing so much damage right now. This is going to allow the teammate, Matafe, to go ahead and crack that bat while Tyler and Unlucky, these absolute controller men, Menaces de descend oh. on Aurora and take them out, Vicky. Oh no, Aurora, I hope I'm not the one that ended up cursing you instead. We were trying to hype up Onset, but I think the karma 
has gotten me back to Vax Gaming playing out of their minds, already securing 5kp, making these last two teams exit out of the lobby. Now they gotta wait for game number two, but Vax Gaming looking on top. Hey, that's exactly what they want. Tyler FPS during this week said, hey, come Sunday, we will be at the top of that leaderboard. So we know they are feeling cool, calm and collected, but VZD on your screen. Now, actually, I think VZN, the first time we're seeing Nox join in on this duo. We know VJ and Zayn last matchup they had kind of played as a duo, so we didn't get to see them in their full standings, but Zayn just absolutely doing the most they can do to gatekeep right now. And that's gonna be Fire Beavers on the other side, a little enticing. I'm wondering here, VCD playing on the outskirts of the circle, which of these teams are gonna contest them? I remember we did see Totem originally rotate out of here, but they are playing at a health disadvantage. So VCD may be looking to gobble them up like an early Thanksgiving feast, but they're just gonna Ooh. be able to loot up early for right now. Oh, it's nice, you know, you get the itis sometimes. So VCD don't definitely wanna get the itis. Instead, they wanna be on their toes and they do see a team rotating in their direction as they are approaching that next circle. Hey, that's what you gotta do. You just gotta keep on moving on to get into that zone. But if you are playing edge, you have to keep in mind like, hey, where is that next team? Where are we going to go? Which positioning do we want? And is that real estate free? If it's not free, you can look at Foot Esports. They took a god spot in map number one of their last match day by just aping the team that was in the position they wanted. And by doing so, you had god spot for end game. It comes to a victory right there. So that's what I'm looking at. But a good free cam right here of Alliance. You got Hakus, Mandy, and Yuki. And let's go ahead and talk about this. Mandy on the horizon. We last saw him on Gibby. They were scrimming on Gibby and it just wasn't working out for that team. So love to see them switch up the composition. And I believe it's the last week we mm -hmm. will be seeing Mandy. And this, this composition works into Alliance's playstyle so well with a, a, a squad actually taking to the skies in front of them. Let's take a look at our first listen in of the day presented by Western Digital while we tune into Alliance. Shall we head this way? Light ammo here. All right, we can shoot this guy. Oh, they're free. Three, two, one, shoot him. Knock him, knock him, knock him, knock him, knock him. Swing on him, swing on him, swing on him. Hold on, guys. He's holding up as well. Yeah, just play the right side. Play the right side. He died. He died. We chill, we chill, we chill, we chill. I died there. These guys are not pushing. I'm crawling up inside, okay? I think you can do it behind here one day. I'm just going to up. I think this is only one guy. We need to kill him, Yuki. Follow me. Uh, yeah. I'm coming out. first. I need to heal. He's not going to heal. Lock him, lock him, lock him. Do a 50 on one. Okay, I'm shooting him. Okay, okay, I'm 40 flash. 40 flash. Yeah, like a lot of flash. On the yeah. we, need to, we need to go back and clear our side now. We're playing for this corner. We're All playing right. for this corner in the tunnel here and then we're killing the team. Uh, killing the team on the other bunker. Yeah. Do you guys have all the cells? No, I don't. No. Oh, damn. I'm gonna go 100 light. I can't shoot that. Is this free? Right here? I have no clue. I have no clue. No, it's not free. I got. All right, should be free. Yeah, that's one we, thing. We need to clear we can, also, we can also play here now. Is that really bad? We have to take space in the game. We have to take space. Yeah. yeah. Take space. Take space. Okay. We're gonna so try I'm, and fight I'm, this. I'm, I'm, I'm we have to fight this. All right, get rid of. Yeah, fast, I'm, fast, I'm fucking yeah, with you. Yeah, go, go, go. good. Let's go. We're landing on this spot out here. You can go underneath the thing too. Out here, yeah? Out here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right out here. There's team right so there. We'll close. We can land here as well. Play the outside and pinch them. Only one guy outside. I think we can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take outside. Take outside, 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 outside. outside, outside. Take outside and pinch them. Yeah. Queue up and send Oh my goodness, what an intense situation. The Arc Stars are being flown in the direction of Alliance. You could hear their talk, their comms, just rotating between each other so that way they could get that rest, even to the point where they were wondering if they used too much of their resources sending out the black hole. I believe sharing this real estate here is Horizon as well as Echo Esports. So Scars in the area too, as Alliance are in a lot of trouble. 
Yeah, this is going to be really spicy because we saw Navi fighting Alliance before they were able to Valk ult into this area and they fell into the hands of Horizon. So it's like they are doing the exact same thing. Now, zero nothing trying to survive oh. that crypto. You don't have movements. So you're forced to disengage, hide behind this little area and Alliance not able to get that IGL back up and Mandy also down. But you know, no, I lied. Mandy's not down. Mandy's living his best life. Yuki and Co trying to keep it. But in the meantime, Fire Beavers, Game Lord, IG International, all these teams are falling. The ring is starting to collapse. Will Horizon come out on top? Not able to get their health back up and looking for cheeky little angles is going to be urban. And that's what you got to do. If you're playing Valk, you have to be able to utilize your surroundings and find any little bit of advantage you can get. But the fact is, a little clean reset for Horizon here. Yeah, but they're looking low on resources here, too. Uh, unfortunately for Zero Nothing, he doesn't have any more syringes or a medkit, it looks like, to work with. So Alliance now are going to be able to out-resource them. They're playing on the outskirts and could potentially stop their rotation if they decide to take their time into rotating to that next circle. That is very risky, though, because we do know that there's so many other teams in the area as we take a look at V2 playing on the outskirts of this circle. Did see that E6 also north of here were able to take down another team. So these teams are dropping like flies as VZ and meet them in the lobby. Ten squads left as put Esports out with a bow check. Is he Legolas as he manages to land some of these bows? You say Legolas, I say Katniss Everdeen, baby, because it's the Hunger <laughs> Games and Noth out here just cracking heads all day, looking so strong. Only 29 <laughs> arrows left, but that's okay because Foot Esports, they got sixth in match day number two, looking to double down and do a little better. Noth closing the gap. I do love a good Watson, especially if you're going to go aggro with it, just navigating this rock and absolutely connecting, leveling up those shields, cracking the horizon, allowing the team throwing enough damage down to kind of swarm Ooh. around them and encompass. Kula is going to fall, but not able to grab it down as well. So now they just need to clean it up. Will that be all? V2 eliminated, done and dusted. Now Foot needs to step forward, get a quick regain. And which is something that I've really seen necessarily right here, Taylor. They're going to grab likely shields, armor swaps, throw them down for their team oh. and get the move on because that ring is going to be at their back and you've got to move. But you got to think, who is going to be on the other side of that rotation? Will you run into a third party? But Echo Esports, Feral throwing out that black hole and nades to follow as they jump down to get in on the action. Eva, eight in hand, just throwing down. They're going to lose out on Bardo, but will they come out? No, they're going to get eliminated. Oh. Oh no, sorry, Obi-Wan's advice did not work out for Echo Esports at that point. No high ground could do you any favors here as LFO Forever, who have bunkered down inside of this building with the Watson fences, have been taking their sweet time now, looking for an opportunity to capitalize off of the bad positioning of Horizon Squad that is forced to play off the low ground. Here comes an EMP to give them some insurance, to give them some room to breathe. That's from zero nothing, so that way they can help reset, get the res on top of it. LFO Forever, though, it doesn't matter to them. They know that there's no other squad contesting them from the back right now. They have some time to work with. I know Scars is a lot across the field from them, and that's a team that's going to apply some of that extra pressure. I think just everyone is kind of wanting to get a piece of this action, get some of those KP. And meanwhile, Horizon not able to live in their little kind of hole that they bunkered down. And so they're going to be eliminated. Four squads remaining. LFO Forever right now sitting with, I believe, seven KP to their name, getting tagged up, forced to jump down from the high ground, get some resources. I love this look right now because we can see Element 6 out there on the right side playing the fence. Scars has been bunkered down in that building for the entirety of this game. So I have to call into question, were they able to get well-needed resources throughout that mid game to sustain them throughout here? Because we know Element 6, Slayers on that lifeline, able to call in consistent care packages. That's such a good point to bring up because when you do bunker down in these end circles, once you get that information, a lot of these teams are denied the opportunity to get the loot that they need. That's why we sometimes see quick squads rotate if they're running their Loba. And like you mentioned, E6 with the lifeline, they haven't deterred away from this composition. They're also rotating away from North Pad, so they had all the time in the world to take their time to be able to get into this next circle. You can see Totem, though, they were able to clear the entirety of the south side of the circle. And with one bullet in the Kraber, who is going to be a victim? You've got to be so clear with that, but it is going to be lackey that 
that is going to hit for 210. You know it feels good when you get a Kraber shot, but using that grab lift to take to the sky, PK in hand, you just want to finish it all off. Four squads remaining, and you are doing everything that you need to do as Reply Totem. Just this team synergy is flowing, but you can see Scars looking to get in on that action, just throwing out some poke fighting, but doesn't want to leave that bunker. So you can see Reply Totem on your left, Element 6 kind of doing what Foot Esports did in that match day one just biding their time, playing it smooth. When they've got that opportunity is when they're going to ensue, and it's just going to be an all-out chaotic fest. But you can see Lifen on the right-hand screen going up to peak just on the skirts of the building, wanting to throw some action down, probably going to give that information back to his team if it's going to be a smart fight, but Nelfo forever not able to make it to that end game. Three squads remaining, Reply Totem looking solid. Reply Totem E6, Scars who have been bunkered down in that building. Totem though, falling a little low, gotta be careful. Are you trying to pop that Phoenix kit though? It's Slayers in an off angle to make sure that they can get that knock. Reply Totem forced their way into this position amazingly. Off of that Kraber shot, they took full advantage into moving into that real estate, but they need to deal with E6 on the other side of the lot. With the Rampage and the Hands of Life, and he's looking to take another off angle. They were also trying to clean up a lot of the other stragglers that were sandwiched in between these two buildings in between these two lots and with case Sweeney pulling up on the whip on that that uh that building just that one's gonna be able to be scary because you have some makeshift cover to work with on the trident hey that's the best second use of the trident utilizing it as a cover i just thought swinney was gonna go for a quick ride maybe some fast and the furious style but if not <laughs> I'm, I'm here for it they are ready for the long haul i feel like this is the calm before the storm as this ring starts to shrink it's gonna force everyone to collapse and i feel as if scars right now kind of near the center can hold out just between their little fortress you've got the watson jenny you've got the newcastle wall and you have all of these fences just kitted out and ready. Hiarka ready to strike like an absolute cobra right now. And Swinny mm. still messing around with the whip, trying to find that perfect parking spot. Looking like me trying to valet park. Parallel, <laughs> to parallel park. <laughs> <laughs> just parallel park specifically, but something important to highlight here, E6 with the crypto is going to immediately ruin all of the plans, all of the chances from Scars and the Watson fences that they build up, because that EMP alone is going to be able to delete all those fences from the outskirts without E6 even getting directly involved. They can grief Scars on the inside of this building and then allow Reply Totem to move in before E6 can move in for a third party. But Reply Totem, understanding the situation, they do have the high ground. They are going to be able to continuously pressure E6, but it's not like E6 is pressured outside of this spot, outside the fence, because the circle is going to be... Horizon available to pop that grab lift, right? To give them high ground at the last second. So it's not like they're gonna be walking oh. in on the low ground scars. Oh, here we go. Some grab lift action. Case Winnie is just trying to get out. We see the black hole flatline hit fire going off, but it's just an all out brawl. Case Winnie trying to hit that bat in the air, but it's gonna go down in the meantime. So Slayers and Life and our last fan standing for E6. And as oh. I say that, they're gonna fall. Oh. It's all down to scars, baby. We needed you to come in strong here. It's scars, your match one victory. They did everything that we needed to do them, Vicky. We did not curse them. We didn't curse them. Oh, thank goodness. Scars, patience wins the